So what's your answer? Would you want to be one of those who is taken or one of those who is left? Now, we've heard about this thing called rapture. There's, there's this thing called the rapture, and you might have seen some of these movies. I mean, very clever movies that were made, or, or even read the book, you know, about um, Left Behind, you know, the, the whole Left Behind series, so forth and so on. Um, of course, most folks will say they want to be the one who was what? Who was taken. Now, let's understand this right here. The rapture. This is all connected with the rapture. See, some believe that ones are going to be raptured up before tribulation. So they really don't care about, you know, certain ecological things or other things going on. You understand? Because they believe in their own self-righteousness. You understand? That they're going to be raptured up because they go to church every day. You know, or, they, or every Sunday, not every day. They'd be better maybe if they did go to church every day. But anyway, be that as it may, you understand? Because they go to church every every Sunday and they give a, a 10%, you understand? They tithe in their church and they believe in the blonde hair, blue eyed uh, uh, Caesar's Christ or Caesare, Cesare Borgia. They believe in the Antichrist image to be Christ's image. They believe in white supremacy has even reached up to heaven. That, that is something else. That's the, that's the iniquity, the abomination that they say reaches up to the heavenlies. But here in the word it says, now pay careful attention to this. Once again, verse 29 says, and they knew not. They were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage. That's all that's going on now, eating and drinking. And partying, but of course, you know, you're not going to eat and drink without partying or, or, you know, to some extent in the way that they're eating and drinking in, in, here in the word, marrying and give, giving in marriage. Now, even the gay so-called people, the homosexuals, they can marry too. You understand? They're, they're now getting their marriage equality or whatever they want to call it. So all these things are prophetic. Flood, before the flood, we have floods. But remember what it said, what, what, what the Almighty said concerning Noah. He won't cause a flood like Noah's to take over, to cover all of the earth. But in selected areas, there would be floods. As what? As signs, as signs of the time. And I'm saying that this Hurricane Irene, you understand, is just one clear sample. Though we've seen it elsewhere, but this is now on American shores, in America. You understand, we've seen floods and stuff in other countries. They show pictures of floods in other countries, and, and we keep seeing this repeat, and these earthquakes, and these storms, and, and wars, and rumors of wars, and, and, and all of the signs that were told to us to watch out for, and it seems as though these signs that we're seeing are happening with increased frequency, you understand, such as the earthquake, you understand, a couple of days before, and they even knew to the degree that some, well, they didn't know about the earthquake coming, but they knew, you know, to a degree about the other one coming. The, there was a big hype around that particular um, um, Hurricane Irene, but not without due, you understand? There was a, there was, there's been a lot of devastation, a lot of, um, not so much loss of life, but there has been loss of life due to this, loss of property, you understand? Um, displacement of people, you understand? And perhaps if these flood waters aren't cleared up in time, there'll be certain pestilences as well. You know, they say, well, there's no more water, no more rain for, uh, forecasted, but there'll be a lot of sunny days. That might be just the worst thing right there. Mm-hmm. That might be just the worst thing right there because there's sunny days. And all this filthy water, in fact, in Jersey, where they have all the chemical plants and everything else that's polluting the earth. Remember in Revelation where it says um, that uh, destroy those who destroy the earth? It's talking about pollution. It's talking about the polluters of the earth, those who harm the earth, those who harm the creation. You understand? Those who harm even the little creatures in their scientific experiments. You understand? Those who have made it so that that creatures are nearing extinction. Those who want to who, who want to extinct us, as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but by the mercy and grace of the God and Father of our Black Lord Jesus Christ, they have not been able, and may they never be able to do so. 
Yovas, may 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 the Lord Adonai Yeshua get the last laugh. But here it says, and they knew not until the flood came. So they were ignorant until the flood came. They don't know how Vermont is all messed up. All the roads got washed. They don't know how this thing happened in Jersey like this. How the waters rise up? This is all you hear on the news. How? How? They don't know not. But the flood came, and now they knew. And took them all away. It did what? It took them all away. So also, or so shall also, the coming of the Son of Man be. It says, so shall also the coming of the child of humanity, the true human being, or the true and, and the followers of the true human being be. Now, remember the question I asked at the last at the end of the last part. I said, which one do you want to be? Remember the parable of Jesus Christos, where he says he says right here he says, um, then shall two be in the field. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, and one shall be left. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken, and one shall be left. And and then and, and, and the other left. Two women shall be. Women shall be is italicized, but in by the gender in the in in the in the original Shemitic language you can tell it's feminine. That's why they put that there, but it's not there exactly like it's written here. But two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. So it's showing that there'll be two in in in, in the common pursuit, as it, as, as it seems, in the common pursuit, in a common pursuit of 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 going about their livelihood. You know what I'm saying? Two in the field, two grinding, one taken, one left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch ye therefore. Watch ye. In other words, be diligent. Pay attention. Don't just just let it go in one ear and out the other ear. You understand? Or perhaps you will be one of those who will be taken. But many Christians believe in this rapture um, theology, which teaches falsely perverting the true interpretation of the Bible. They believe that when the rapture comes, before the tribulation, they're going to be raptured up. They're going to be taken out of here. Like bodily, they're going to poof, just disappear. You understand? And, and the rest of us, if we're not part of their congregation, then the rest of us are going to be down here to suffer with the devil and Antichrist while they be up in heaven with their um, Caesar's Christ or with Jesus. You understand? With their, with their Zeus, they're going to be in heaven with Zeus, and the rest of us are going to be down here suffering. But that's not what the Bible is teaching. Pay, pay attention to this right here. It says, remember, all this is connected with Noah. And this is one of the signs of the time, the end of the world, so forth and so on. Right? It's connected with Noah. Right? It says that, that in the time, in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, having a good time, going out, partying, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not, you know what I'm saying, until the flood came. And took them. That's the key right there. The flood came and did what? The flood came and took them all away. The flood came and took them all away. Now, the verse right after this, it is said, Then shall two be in the field. Two types of people. You understand? See, Noah was one type of person. And the others who were taken away by the, by the flood of the ungodly waters... You understand? Know all the waters that, that purify the earth and got rid of the hybrids, because there were a lot of hybrids, just like today. There's a lot of hybrids. You know, ones may look uh, human or human-like, but they're not really human. And we're not, uh, well, maybe we have to leave that for another, for another teaching right there, another lecture. You understand? But in Noah's time, there were hybrids. You understand? There were the giants were in the earth. There were hybrids. You see what I'm saying? And, and they were part of the of, of, of the spirit, you understand, and part of the seed of the fallen angels that did not hold to their true first estates. And now we hear about the fallen angels in Jude. And Jude is now referencing to two Ethiopic books that were not known until recent times among Western white Christians, and that is the book of Jubilees and the book of Hanok or the book of Enoch. 
And this is just one chapter, but we're just going to go through this just to make that connective point. It says right here, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Ayin, or Cain, and they ran greedily after the era of Balaam. This is what's happening even right here in the user, in America. They're running after the era of Balaam, and even the so-called dream. The dream, you understand? The, they, they replaced the vision of God with the alleged dream of Martin Luther King Jr. and don't recognize the signs of the time. For reward, for reward, show me the money, is what they say. They, they want somebody to show them this and more of it. They want to be shown the money. You, you know this? Which is, if you know the secret of money, money as debt is a good is a good video. I think there's a part two, and and we have a series of videos on money as debt. So it gives you a real good um, overview of 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 money, how the monetary economic system, even the zeitgeist, the most recent zeitgeist, is good on that particular level. So one has to really understand understand these matters when one's gone through the scriptures, and they perish in the gainsaying of Kore. And the game said Kore. Kore was another priesthood. You understand? In other words, we are of the Bible, of God, then the Father, of our black Lord Jesus Christ. You understand? But they, they don't like the fact we say black. You understand? They want us to worship Caesar Bogiers. You understand? The son of Pope Alexander the Sixth. But we refuse to worship the image of the beast, the image of the Antichrist. Yovas, but they represent, like Korah did, an alternative, you understand, a men-pleasing, a pragmatic sort of church where they don't talk about judgment. They don't talk about fire and brimstone. Instead, they talk about prosperity. Now, don't, don't, don't get it twisted and don't make no mistake about it. The Almighty wants us prosperous, but he wants us prosperous in the true ways, in the lasting ways, not prosperous in the so-called filthy lucre, you understand, of a demonic and a devil-possessed system. You know what I'm saying? So be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, is what our black Lord Jesus Christ teaches us and says to us. But these other kinds are like spots in your feast of charity, in your love feast. When they feast themselves, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, without any sort of fear, they don't have any sort of, of teferi. They don't have teferi. They don't have tifara. They don't have tiferet. You know what Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit. Have you ever seen so many trees, even a lot of them seemingly healthy, just falling like they're falling? Isn't that... Interesting? Isn't that very interesting? But these are the kind of the trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit. N not just that their fruit withereth, but they don't even have any fruit. They're fruitless trees. They don't have the fruit, the true fruit of the Holy Spirit. Twice dead. Now, that's, that's deep right there. Twice dead. In other words, they are dead in this world, and they are dead in the world to come, the true new world order. Christ. New World Order, the King of Kings and His Christ, New World Order. They are twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea. We've seen a lot of that over the last couple of days, right? All the rage on the weather reporters down by the seaside. I'm here, you know, the, the wind is blowing, and, and you can see that's water right there. That's water that just splashed on me. Yeah, all right, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now, we have to understand this is blackness of darkness because there is also a blackness of the true light. Make, make no mistake about it and understand that carefully. So saying the blackness of darkness to say that there is no light in that darkness, but the true light shineth in, you understand, the darkness and illuminateth the darkness. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh. Adonai cometh with ten thousand of his saints to do what? Verse 15 is important in Jude. 
verse 15 says, to execute judgment upon all. In other words, we all, even I and I, we all must be judged. We all must be judged. Either we will be acquitted or condemned. It's like either we'll be vindicated by the, the process of judgment or we'll be condemned. So how dare they think they're going to run away? How, how dare they think they're going to be so-called pseudo-rapture taken, taken up? See, in, in, in Thessalonians where it talks about rapture, or, or, or rapizio, you know what I'm saying, rapizio, rapizio, it is speaking of taken up in the spirit, you know what I'm saying, taken up in the spirit, in the spirit of their minds, in the spirit of their hearts and their minds, and while they were blind to this truth, when they receive, you know what I'm saying, the truth, they'll be able to see and recognize what is the length and depth and the breadth, you understand, know of the word of God. But to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. This is, this is the, the true ministry of Rastafari's role and purpose that even amongst us, that's why judgment must happen at the house of God first, because even amongst us there had been some slackness, some half-stepping, some skylarking on that particular matter, that we are here to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed in the name of white supremacy, the majority of it, in, in this Gentile world dominion, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, have spoken against our God Father, against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first, elect of God, king of kings of Ethiopia. Now, you can like it or lump it. You could be upset about it if you want to, but you can't change the fact. It's reality. You understand? So pray that the Almighty opens up your heart and your mind so you can understand this truth. It's a, it's a vitally important truth because we are in the position in the sense of Noah. You understand where well, we are preaching this and, and, and proclaiming this. You understand righteousness, not our righteousness, not self-righteousness, you understand, but his righteousness. And they scoff at it and they mock it. Verse 16 says, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. They are murmurers and complainers. They only have a problem with the righteous and righteousness. They don't have any problem with wickedness. You know, you, you hear about innocent people getting killed and murdered and sexually abused and other kind of things going on. And they'd be like, oh, that's how it is. That, that's it is what it is. You know, what can we do about it? You know what I mean? But as soon as you point out the truth to them, then they become murmurers. Then they become complainers and grumblers. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And they take counsel against Yahweh and his machine. But these are murmurs and complainers walking after their own lust. They're walking after their, their own lust. And their mouth speak of great swelling, great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. You know, some really, you know, they, 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 they look at us askance. You know, with strange, strange Buddha eye, with strange evil eyes, when we speak of Rastafari and Haile Selassie the first, and they say, oh, 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 they just want somebody to hold on to. Oh, oh Haile Selassie, he didn't do You know, they, 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 they're hoping. I'm not going to repeat all the because they, they're on record. You know what I mean? Basically, it's good that they are. But what advantage? Because some may say that we, we, we are. Uh, are like this. We we have his uh, his Majesty in in admiration because of advantage. But what advantage in this world is there to proclaim the name of Christ in his kingly character of Kedemawi Haile Selassie of Rastafari? What advantage was were, were, were there to our our brothers and sisters who many of them were murdered, many of them were martyred, many of them were killed and abused. Many Rastafari have bled blood and have died for this testimony of Rastafari. So what advantage in this world? So it's a spiritual advantage, but it's not a temporal advantage. See, we don't expect to get 
this by preaching this message. If we wanted to know in the Bible, as the Almighty has allowed us to know this, we could preach a lot of other user-friendly kind of messages, you know, do the same kind of Creflo Dollar and the rest of them kind of spoof and farce. But no, 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 that's not good. You understand? But beloved, remember ye the words. We seek to remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of Getachin Jesus Christos. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Because, see, there's been many times, as we have Babylon, as we have Greece, as we have Medo, Persia, Assyria, as we have Rome. You know, and there have been many times where we've gone through something similar to this. You understand? Some so-called megalomaniacs. You understand? And demon-possessed folk. You understand who want to rule the world? You understand and 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 make themselves into into gods. You understand gods of the world. They control it. They put in God we trust on 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 this, but don't even have it in the majority of their churches. Go into the church in the court building on the dollars they have it there. But go into they'll judge you. But go into the churches and you barely will find in God we trust. Some churches might, but the majority of them don't. Ask yourself, why is that? How that there they told you in the last time that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. So are not seeking to walk after the way, the truth, and the life of the King of Kings and His Christ, but after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves. They separate themselves from the true message of salvation because they are sensual. They want to feel good. They want to feel good message. See, a lot of people thought when it said sensual, it meant something sexual. But sensual does not always mean sexual. Sensual may lead to sexual, but sensual does not mean sexual. Sensual means a sense. They want something, they, they want a feel good message. You understand? Know Somebody preaching about fire and brimstone and, and hell and damnation. They, they don't want to hear that. That doesn't make them feel too good. You understand? So they separate themselves from the, the, the good influence, you understand, of the King of Kings and his Christ because they're sensual. What, what does it say right here, comma? Having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Now, just to return here, just to conclude this portion on the rapture, because we want to give you a full, you know, a fuller background on exactly why we do not accept as true the pseudo-Christian um, uh, misinterpretation of the rapture. You understand? Where they believe that somehow they're going to be spared some judgment. No, everybody... Everybody got to be judged. Everybody got to be judged. So don't hold no grudge to that. But while you have the time and opportunity, if you read on in Jude, it basically says, But ye beloved, but ye my friends, wadajoch, wadajoche, wadajoch, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the it says Holy Ghost here, but it should be the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduce, the Ruach HaKodesh. Keep yourselves in the love of God, in the true love of God, and the love of God is the commandments. The love of God is the commandments. You know, some people say, oh, people preach all this religion and stuff, but it's all about love. And then they'll go do some very unloving thing, and then they'll say, oh, you're not religious enough you, you, you act like you're religious, so you should just forgive. You should just forgive, even though they'll tell you they don't believe in your God. When Christ spoke that, you know, saying he didn't say forgive the Romans. You know, saying he said forgive your enemies among your own kind, your own people. You understand? That's what he was saying clearly. Because he was speaking to disciples. He was giving the disciples certain instruction so that they could show the world a better way a better example, those who are still in worldliness. So they've mistaught the Bible on many significant levels. But it says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the what? mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life.
Now, how interesting is that? See, a lot of people think that it, it, it's, it's saying um, looking for Jesus Christ to come in the clouds with a, with a Philharmonic orchestra or something. We're not being mockers. This is what they've told us. This is what they've taught us. Why they told us, don't read the Bible. Any, any nigga reading the Bible, we're going to kill you if you read the Bible. Now niggas can read the Bible. They don't want to read the Bible. There's a judgment waiting for you, nigga. You better wake up, nigga. You understand? And find out what your true name is. Your true name is not nigga, but nigga is significant because nigga is that byword. Nigga is that byword so you know who's who. And it says, of some have compassion, making a difference. Of some, we are to have compassion and make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Of some of them. And others save with fear. Save them with fear. You know what I'm saying? In, in other words, we can't make this a feel-good message and save ones with fear. That's contradictory. You know what I'm saying? But most of the lost sheep, they prefer some type of church or some type of pseudo-Christianity, first of all, that has a white Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That has the image of the beast, have Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? They worship Jesus Christ, but not our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They worship Jesus Christ, Cesare Borgia, Cesare Borgia, right? Then they want a feel-good message that only speaks about how they can get more and more and more. In other words, they, they want a, a religion that has a, 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 a monetary, worldly reward only. You know what I'm saying? Forget about, forget about anything else, any other consideration. You understand? Just the me, 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 me ism. Now, what is interesting, I picked this up from a documentary I saw recently about William Tyndale, um, a brother. I mean, when I say a brother, not so much he was a brother because he was black, because you're not just black because you're my brother. You are black because you, I mean, you are my brother <laughs> because you seek to do the will of my father. You understand? That's why you're my brother. So, um, William Tyndale, that was a brother there because he was burned at the stake you know, burnt alive, you understand, for um, for translating the Bible, you know what I mean, for to understand how significant, you know, they dumb down the people so much that they can have Bibles, give away Bibles free, and people won't read them. Mm -hmm. Or they'll just read certain parts of the Bible that talk about how they can curse their enemies and how they can pray for money and riches. So they can do what? So they can help poor people, help other people? No. Just so that they can lift up their head and have a false sense of pride. You understand? And talk about their Jesus. You understand? Not their Lord. Notice they, they always say, my Jesus. They don't say, my Lord. Because they don't want, they, they despise dominion. They despise rulership. They despise authority, especially righteous authority. So if you're like that, you're in a bad way. That's why it says of others, save with fear. You understand? Save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. That's very important to us as a people, as a black people. If you, if you look at the moral decay of, of black men and women, especially the women, but the men, the, men, the men are wrapped up in it too. In fact, a lot of the women are in it because of the men. You understand, and and it goes vice versa and everything. But remember, Adam and Eve, they both were guilty, yeah, to a different degree based on what they did and what part they played. But they both were guilty. So instead of saying, "Well, we're in this situation because of Eve," well, dummy Adam just ate. Dummy Adam could have said, "No, no, 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 I ain't gonna eat that. Why you eat that?" You understand? He didn't do that. You understand? But he he followed her, so he was even worse. You understand? Adam, the black man, is worse than the black Eve. So we're talking about feminism and, 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 and how black females are right now. Yeah, they, they got a judgment if they don't repent and change their way. But we as the black males have to recognize, you know saying, our headship, you know saying, our aras, you know saying, and take responsibility. You know this? But hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Then it has a doxology and a prayer here. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen.
Now, there's, there's another word that's coming to me on, on, on this and in this context right here, where people talk about Christ coming back, you know, like they said, Jesus is coming, right? Jesus says, I, behold, I come, you understand? But you have to remember that he, 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 truth, God, and the, and the revelation of it is a continually coming matter. God will continually reveal himself, and he, in his essential, his essence is the truth, is, is, is the way, the truth, and the life. You understand? We've been living in a dispensation, you understand, of, of ignorance and of darkness, and it's coming to an end. That's the old world. See, that's the old world. The new world order is the world order of Christ. Are you ready for it? You see, some people say that Christ is... is they're looking for Christ to come again. We, according to the scriptures, are not looking as they are looking for Christ to come again. We're looking for him to reveal himself because we know he's with us always. He says, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, lo is short for look. He's old English short for look. So it just says, and look, look, see this, recognize this as a reality. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So Christ is saying that for the true mitmanon, for the true and the faithful, he is with us how long? Until he ascended? No, he was still, he's still with us. You understand? He is still with us in spirit and in truth. He is with us. Whether well, the true worshipers, the day is coming. You understand? Well, the true worshipers wouldn't worship in a particular place or particular spot, so to speak. You understand? But with worship in spirit and in truth. You understand? Because they don't know what they are worshiping. But we know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Moa, Andesa, Ze'ima, Negeda, Yehuda. Salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the lion of the tribe of Judah. For it is evident that our Lord, our black Lord and Savior, sprang from Judah. And the revelation of Rastafar of his majesty is just the, the, the proof positive, the proof positive concerning that reality. So we're not looking for Jesus to come as the Antichrist and those deceived by the Antichrist are looking for Jesus to come. You know, so they're looking for a physical image to approximate the image that they made, that you worship. So don't you see that right there, the image of the beast? It's, it comes full cipher right there. We know Christ is with us always. So sometimes I say to certain Christians when they talk about, yeah, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is with us always. He's with us always. We're looking for his revelation, for him to reveal himself. But we're not looking at it just in a physical sense, but in the full sense of it. You understand? So as the spirit, you understand, precedes the soul, you understand, or the psychological, so does that precede the physical. So the physical is not the first thing. The physical is not the first matter. You understand, the physical is not the first matter. But in anti-Christendom, the physical has been exalted above and beyond the spiritual. You understand? Therefore, it is not spiritual. It is a pseudo. It is a false. It's a calcified and a falsified version or perversion of Christianity. You understand? That is what is popularly when people say, I'm a Christian. You understand? And you, you should ask them, you're a Christian? Do you know the Bible? I mean, do you, do you have any knowledge of the Bible? You know, I mean, if you're a Christian, well... The only way I know you're a Christian is based on based on your scripture, based on the word. You understand? The only way I know I'm a Christian, you understand, a Christian, is based on the word. You understand? It's based on the word. So those are some those are some of the unfun the unfunny the unfunny games that they play. You understand? They try to play with ones and ones. He he says he's with us always. He's with us always. Always. So if he's with us always and all power has been given to him in heaven and earth, then, then why do we fear? You know what I'm saying? Why do we fear to be here in tribulation and to pass through this tribulation? In fact, in Revelation, it says, who, are, who is this great multitude 
wearing linen, wearing the fine linen, likened unto like the Ethiopian um, um, garments, the traditional Ethiopian costumes and, 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 and holy Ethiopian garments, which are like the garments of the Bible, of the African Zion, th th this multitude arrayed in the white garments, and it says that the garments is their righteousness, they have put on, they have washed their garments in the blood of the Lamb. And then it says of some um, make exception, have exception, save them with fear. You know, even while hating, right, the, the garment, the garment that's spotted by the flesh. Because when we teach them to observe those things and we also learn and do from what we have, 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 have come to accept as we're transforming our mind through, through the study and the prayer and the meditation, you understand? And, and these are very important things, my brothers and sisters. When it says to pray, you understand? The more we learn how to pray or what is a prayer, you understand? Not that we're to pray just as, just to quote an area of scripture as a prayer, but to pray in spirit and to pray in truth according to the, the order, the acceptable order, you understand? That what he accepts. You understand? Not what he rejects, not to make up something, but to learn his way, as he says, to learn of me. So that whole idea that they tell you or they try to tell you about um, the rapture or one shall be taken. And I've heard Christians, I grew up, as they say, quote, unquote, in the church. And I've heard ones and ones say, I want to be one of those who's taken. But according to the context of what, you know, they said the red letter Bible is Christ's words. Well, according to the context of what's written here. The ones who will be taken away are the ungodly. The ungodly will be taken away. Not just taken away out of the earth, but they're going to be taken away with the evil deception. They're going to be caught up at, 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 at an excessive and exceeding rate with this deception. And in various ways, we're beginning to see, you know, we see various signs of this. You understand? It hasn't, I guess, reached that level yet. But it's, it's, it's like a cup. A cup has to fill before it spill. You know, a cup has to fill before it spill. So, so it's like when, when somebody's pouring something for you and you see it fill up and they say, tell me when, and, and you let it, and they keep going and it, it's filling up, it's filling up. So when it gets filled and can fill no more, it begins to spill. So the same thing is happening in this particular time with the level of wickedness and level of evil in, in, in this world. But the recent events we thought was interesting um, to share at least this particular this was actually this is actually the the the, 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 the the preface or the preview. This was like the foreword about this particular um message because it was one of these old remember I tell you brothers and sisters to have a good composition notebook. And to, and to journal your studies and other ideas concerning the way, the truth, and the life, to, to journey it, to journal it, you understand, and have a good study book. This is one of I and I older um, study books that um, our, our, our copy books, right? And in this particular um, copy book, during the storm and all these storms, I began to think on... Um, some areas of scripture that I've become somewhat familiar with and like right here where it talks about um in in, in, in Job we got we got a verse here from Job and then there's another prophetic uh uh scripture right here that it's Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel. Ezekiel um Ezekiel 30, 38, it appears to be Ezekiel 38, that we've gone through a translation a couple of years ago, and the Holy Spirit had led us to look up storms and God's word concerning storms. Because I think a couple of years ago, there was some, some really uh, great and powerful storms that had come through. And we heard about different storms, and perhaps some people had asked us about, you know, what do we think about these storms and what's going on, so forth and so on. And the word that we first came up with, and we don't hear many people talk about this word anymore in the more abstract sense, but 
is tempest, a tempest. And we wrote down a definition right here of tempest, and just to show you a little bit right here. We wrote down a definition of um, tempest right here, right, the up here first, tempest. And it says, one, a most violent commotion of the ear. A tempest is a most violent commotion of the ear, either with or without rain. And that's interesting because we just read Jude where it says that these are clouds without rain, hail or snow. And then it mentions it in Acts uh, 27, verses 18 to 20. Then it has tempest in another sense as being uh, defined as being grievous and an unexpected affliction. Those who have been affected by um, Hurricane Irene, th this is grievous to them. It's an unexpected, it's an unexpected, um, a unexpected uh, um, affliction that they have experienced. Now, we just want to get the scripture here, the, the, the English part of the scripture, so we can go through this. This was the, actually the, the, the main part where the Almighty says that um, he will destroy in this end times. A, a large part of the destruction will come through the so-called natural, the so-called natural using nature, showing that he is, truly the God, the true Elohim of the heaven and the earth, that he will destroy this, this end time um, occupying, this occupying force, because we're, we're, the earth is being occupied by demons currently, you understand, we're under enemy occupation, and many of those who have gotten in bed with like the so-called New World Order or the so-called Illuminati or, or, or any of these evil archons, the ones who are, you know, Satanists and the rest of them, they are the human part of the equation. They are the human representatives of this unseen, generally speaking, unseen um, enemy occupation. But it had mentioned part of the scripture that we had went to was right here, they said this was a prophecy against Gog, the whole Gog and Magog area of prophecy. But there's like, a, like we said, there's, a, there's many areas in the scripture where it actually touches on this. In fact, our first quote that we had actually um, went to or had, had wrote, wrote down was from Job. So if we turn to Job 21 and 18, let's just turn there quickly in the couple of minutes we have in this vlog here. Job... Uh, 21 and 18, here's what it says in 21 and 18, Job 21 and 18 says, um, they are as stubble before the wind, as chaff that the storm carried, carried away. Here is Job's sixth answer, the prosperity of the wicked, the prosperity of the wicked refutes the view that he is afflicted because a secret sinner. In other words, Job was saying that his friends would tell him that, well, you are, I mean, this is real drama here. What Job went through is a real drama. I mean, forget Shakespeare for a moment. Here's some real, some real drama, what Job went through, because now he's suffering what he's suffering. This affliction that has been brought on by this, um, by this, uh, this, 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 this case that 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 Satan is saying, listen, in spite of yeah, Job may seem like a righteous man, but everybody can be touched through touching them materially. See, Satan's argument was that man is a material creature, and he's so wrapped up in materialism that he will even reject even the most righteous would reject even if you put enough hell you know, metaphorically speaking, on them. And Job now is answering his friends because his friends are telling him that, well, different ones are telling him different things, but one friend tells him that this is because you look like you're a righteous guy, but really you're going through what you're going through. You're suffering and you've been afflicted in these ways where you lost your family, you lost everything you had, you lost your health and all these other things because you're a secret sinner. See, Job, we know about you. You pretend to be righteous, but you're a secret sinner. You've done something, something that you don't want nobody to know about. You've done something wrong, right, Job? 
That's why you're going through this. Because Job's main contention was like, what have I done? Now, by studying and reading this, we know that Job didn't do anything, in a sense, other than, well, what Job did was be righteous. You know what I mean? For one will suffer persecution, you understand, in seeking to live godly. You know, those who seek to live godly will suffer persecution. So for the righteous, you understand, or for the true Christian, we have to recognize that this time of tribulation, although there's nothing we can do to change it, we should not fret it. And, and, and because a lot of people are unwrapping, a lot of folks are just unwrapping, knowing 2012 is coming up, and you're probably going to see it in the news. A lot of crazy stuff is going to happen just because people are going out their mind talking about the end of the world because they don't know exactly what the end of the world is in its proper context. You know what I'm saying? Now, Job here, he gives a kind of a long um, answer, but he comes up to a certain part where he says, um, where he says, how oft, like, how often is the candle of the wicked put out? In other words, how often does the, the evildoers, the wicked, get their comeuppance, and how often cometh the, their destruction upon them? In other words, he's saying that this happens, that, that, that God proves his righteousness by what he does, that, that the righteous God still is there's still ma'at. There is still, even on that abstract idea of justice and knowledge, you understand, and, and judgment. Because some people say, well, how long will the wicked keep, keep persecuting the poor? But the poor may be poor, but the poor is not always poor and righteous. So the, if the poor became righteous, then that poverty would be a spiritual poverty, a humility, you understand, know and not even that poverty that has befallen, for example, the lost sheep. You know, black people say they don't have money, but then everybody comes and gets money from the black community because we are divided against ourselves, you understand, know because we as a people have turned our back on our identity and who we are. Now, we've talked about that and we will continue to talk about that, but continuing with Job, God distributeth sorrows in his anger. God distributeth sorrows. So there's a lot of sorrows going on right now in the aftermath to these, the, the, this tornado and everything. But are people looking at that, 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 that the Almighty God is angry because America will say, God bless America, you know what I'm saying, but... If God blesses America, the same God of the Bible that in court they use, they, they, and, and they, they claim America is connected with this somehow, you know, um, would he not distribute the sorrows in his anger? It may not be individual anger, per se, to everybody who's affected, but saying some things you're doing that is not right. I mean, for example, the fact that Virginia, you understand, at its root is named after the virgin. And, and, and there's a virgin daughter of Babylon that is mentioned in the prophetic books of Scripture. And they suffer an earthquake. And we know that that great city in Revelation is also known as Babylon. And this wasn't a great, great earthquake, but this was a sign. It was almost like a wake-up call. Like in spite of everything, the Almighty is showing an incredible amount of restraint. Now, I know some folks are going to say, you know, they got some type of science and technology and the harp and everything else that they can do these same things. Well, they can do certain things, but it's the Almighty who is sovereign, who's above all those things. You understand? As the word says that the 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 wisdom that the that Babylon's wisdom has deceived them. That they can do some things, but they become deceived to think that they are like God or gods or are greater than Ha Elohim. You know what I'm saying? deceived in their wisdom, their technology. You know what I'm saying? They trust in their wisdom and technology. And so we can see this as the Almighty is angry, but he's still showing mercy. You know what I'm saying? He's still showing mercy. So people now might be able to look at the reality of life and get and, and, and get into what is important. You know what I'm saying? To get into the way, the truth, and the life before it's too late. Now, Job goes on and says, they are as stubble before the wind and as chaff that the storm carried away. So we focus on Benefas, Benefasit, in the Gelaba, Mek Sefetim, Yemet Abacho. In other words, their chastisement, their chastisement comes upon them. Now, what is interesting right here, 
about this. In the English, it says, uh, in the English, it says, God layeth up, next verse, verse 19, we're in 21 and 19. Let's get the Mets out to do. So we have a note here that we notice in this particular study. Um, let's go to the Met of Caduce just to confirm this because we haven't looked in this particular copy book in some time. But in in trying to understand what's going on, we had to search it out in his word and pray and meditate. And then we recall, oh, yeah, we had went over this before. Um, that was verses 18 and 19. Now let's go to 21, 18, mm-hmm. And 19, okay, here it goes, 21, 18, and 19. Now, what's interesting about this, and we really want to put this up here, so you're Job 21, 21, 18. Let's go to 21. Job 21, 18. You, you need to um, study this right here, Job 21 to 18. Now, Job 21 and 18. Let me try to show those. I don't know how clear this is going to be. This is like the first page in this copy book, right, from a couple of years ago. Now, you can see down here, down here we basically state, we basically state that um, there's a question that's missing from the King James. In other words, in the King James Version of the Bible of Job, chapter 21, verse 18, it is not complete there. It's not complete. There's a missing verse, and we're going to touch on that hopefully in the next part of this. So stay tuned. All right? Shalom. Rastafari.